Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who keeps our hearts and minds, and who's loved us with an everlasting love. Um, I wanted to share on this topic of, you know, the heart and mind crisis of the last days, because it has definitely arrived. Um, you see, it clear as day. Uh, this has a lot to do with social media, because, you know, most people wouldn't behave the way they behave face-to-face -face with somebody else. I'm, and I'm talking in the church. I'm not talking about in the world. Um, but, you know, the things I've just been seeing lately, you know, on social media, the way that so-called Christians are treating other Christians is pathetic. And it is so unbiblical. And I just wanted to share some scriptures, you know, because we all need to check ourselves because we don't want to get caught up. You know, the word tells us very plainly, the love of many is going to wax cold. And we don't want to be in that number. But anyway, so let's get into this. Because this is strictly that we might examine ourselves and seek the Lord that we could be, you know, walking according to his will. And not falling into the the things that are going on out there, you know, not, not partaking. Um, because the Lord has called us to peace. But anyway, so let's start. Everybody's pretty familiar with the scripture here, 2 Timothy 3. I'm just going to read a portion. It just says this now also, that in the last days perilous times shall come for men. And I know I've pointed this out before that this is, you know, the perilous times come from men, not from earthquakes, not from famines. Those are horrible, hard things. But the, the perilous times are from men, according to this scripture, okay? Because they will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. That means they have no self-control. Fierce. That means they are like ferocious. Um, despisers of those that are good. Traitors. Heady. And this word heady, it means rash. Like without careful consideration of possible consequences of their words or actions. And this is what I see on social media that bothers me so much. Because we don't think about the things that we say, how, you know, words could be swords that go down into the depths of somebody's heart. You know, we should be very caring of what we're saying to other fellow believers. Because like the Lord said, you know, what you do, the least these, my brethren, you're doing it to me. So we should take heed to that word. Anyway, he says they will be high-minded. I mean, self-conceited, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Now, if God is telling us from this type of a person to turn away, you know, if you're living as this type of a person, do you think God's going to not turn away from you? Um, these are very serious things, you know. There's people on, on social media condemning other Christians, attacking them, judging them, unfriending them, blocking them. And really what this boils down to is hating. It's not love, okay? All because of holidays, because of foods, because of different beliefs. And I'm not talking about doctrinal things that we are told to separate because of. I mean, we all know if a brother or sister is living in fornication, we are not to eat with them. We are not to fellowship with them until they repent, okay? I'm talking about things that don't matter, like, for instance, flat earth. I mean... Whether the earth is flat or the earth is round, it makes no difference. God did not call us to preach the earth doctrine. He called us to preach the gospel. And if somebody wants to believe the earth is flat, we can still love them. If somebody wants to believe the earth is round, we can still love them. Okay? And as for holidays and foods, you know, the word is very clear. You know, one man esteems one day above another. Another man esteems every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. All the Lord cares is we don't make someone stumble. You know, it's like with foods. It says in the word, one man believes he can eat everything. Another man believes he can eat only vegetables. We are to receive one another. And these things do not make us, whether we do a day, don't do a day. Whether we eat a food or don't eat a food. Whether we believe the earth is flat or round. None of these things make us better or worse, okay? If you believe the Antichrist is Trump, you believe the Antichrist is Hitler coming back from the dead, you believe the Antichrist is Prince Charles, doesn't matter. No, because none of these are provable from the word of God. So they don't matter. You're entitled, you have liberty 
to believe what you currently believe. But you do not have liberty to condemn other believers because they don't believe as you do. Or they don't eat as you do. Or they don't celebrate as you do. Okay? Who Babylon is? Does it matter? I mean, we're all going to know without a doubt at some point. It is not worth hating your brothers and sisters over. It says in Philippians 2, 1 through 3, if, notice the if, if there be any, therefore any consolation in Christ, that being encouragement, okay? If any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels, that be an inward affection and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye may be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through strife, or vainglory. And that word vainglory means self-conceit. Okay, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. When you look at these things, these are the things that should be flowing in the body of Christ. Encouragement. Comfort. Fellowship. Okay, of the Spirit. Inward affection. Mercies. Okay, we should be walking in love. Hey, we have to be doers of the word, not hearers only, or we deceive our own self. So I just want to ask some people, where's the liberty? Where's the forgiveness? Where's the faith? Where is the love? Because these things are mandatory before our God. It says in 2 Timothy 2, 24-25, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. So if we're out there provoking strife, because that's what this means, the servant of the Lord must not strive. We must not operate in strife because where there's envy and strife, there's every kinds of evil. Okay. We're to be gentle. We're to be patient. We're to be meek. We are to be considering others better than ourselves. And when somebody don't buy your belief, you know, we, we should know that no man sees anything except the Lord um, reveals it to him. We don't have the ability to see of our own selves. So if we want somebody to see something that the Lord has revealed to us, then we need to pray for them. Sincerely pray for them. Sincerely pray for the body of Christ to have their eyes open. Because the word tells us to speak the same thing, be of one mind, be of one heart, be in one accord. These things we're called to. And we do that by doing the things that God said. And the main thing that God said is to love one another, which is the one thing that I see, especially on social media, just avoided, just sidestepped, you know, because it's more important what we think. It's more important that you come to our, you know, you come to my belief. That's, that's what is being pushed out there as important. And what is important is God's will that we love one another. That's what's important. It says in Colossians 3, 12 through 15, put on therefore as the elect of God. Are you the elect of God? Okay, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. The bond of perfection, okay? Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to the which... Also, you are called in one body and be thankful. Now, this is the word of God. Forbearing one another. People now are like, oh, man, you celebrate Christmas? Bye. You know, you're not on my friend list, you pagan. <laughs> it's just like crazy out there. You know, where's the forgiveness? Where's the liberty? Where's the love? It's just crazy. You know, I, I don't want to be a part of it. So I take this word you know, these things to my own self, because I don't want to be a hearer only. I want to be a doer. Okay. Matthew 18, 33 through 35 is should, shouldest not thou also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you. Now think about that. If we can, we look at our lives with the Lord, we all know if we know him, he has great mercy to us. He has great patience. He has great love. And so if we receive those things from the Lord, shouldn't we also give, freely give those same things to our fellow servants, our fellow brethren? 
And this goes on to tell us because this person did wrong in the scriptures. If you go read the whole chapter, it says his Lord was wroth, delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due him. So likewise shall my heavenly father do also unto you if you from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. If you have hatred in your heart towards someone who is a brother or sister in Christ, if you have hatred in your heart towards somebody who believes that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead, he's coming again, he was born of a virgin, he is the Lord. If you have hatred in your heart towards somebody with that confession, you got problems. We need to we need to get right. We need to repent and and seek the Lord for a right heart. Matthew 24, 10 says, And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and hate one another. And I can see this on social media. I can see it. Because like the Lord says, the mouth speaks the abundance of the heart. I see the, the words toward other people is horrible. It's just horrible. Surely it, it just irritates the Lord. Okay, he goes on in Matthew twenty four twelve, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And this, what we see going on right now, you know, when people are out there uh, biting, stabbing, you know, trying to conquer others, it's like that iniquity, that hatred, it just, you know, it affects your heart and your mind. And I can see where iniquity abounding, the love of many can wax cold. And that is why in this day, we need to really take heed to this word. We really need to take heed to this, okay? Because the Lord said, Luke 6, 27 through 28, But I say unto you which hear, do you hear? Do you hear the word of God? Do you hear the Holy Spirit? Have you heard the Lord? Because this is what he says to us. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Now you may think, oh, this, this applies to the world. Nope, sorry. Sorry. Your enemies are in what is called Christianity. Okay, those people out there biting and devouring one another without the love of God in their hearts. Okay, those are the people we need to love. It's like we need to be an example. You know, if you're on social media, don't go with that flow. Don't go with that flow of condemning others. Just don't do it. Pray for them. Encourage them. Speak peace. Speak truth. Speak love, you know, to them. Um, in Revelation 2.23, Jesus said, I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. In this word, it means the minds, okay? The Lord searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. So, you know, you got to know what is he looking for when he's searching? What is he looking for? It says in Hebrews 8.10, I will put my laws into their mind. I will write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Then in Hebrews 10, 16, same book, different chapter, he says, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. So when he's searching the hearts and the minds, he's looking for his holy word in there. Okay, and then he says in John 15, 12, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. So when you look at Jesus is the word of God, he is the word become flesh. He is God. And what is God? God is love. So when he's searching our hearts and our minds, he's looking for his word. Yes, he desires truth in the inward parts. But it is love. It is love he's looking for. It says in Psalms 81, 11 through 13, but my people would not hearken to my voice. That is his law. That is his word. Okay. And Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own hearts lust and they walked in their own counsels oh that my people had hearkened unto me and israel had walked in my ways my ways that's the way of love the way of peace okay so when we're walking in our own way and our our own strifes out there you know d demanding our way demanding our doctrines to be received even the Lord, you can't even demand somebody to receive the truth. I mean, who do you think you are? The Lord opens eyes. He opens ears. He gives hearts understanding, not us. We have the, the command to preach the gospel, but we don't have the ability to open eyes. That is such pride, and we should not never walk in it. Um, Proverbs 21, 2 through 4 says, Every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the hearts. 
Okay, and then he goes on to say to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And this means to do righteousness, to do divine law. What is divine law? This is my commandment that you love. Love one another as I've loved you. You know, righteousness, all ah, the fruits of righteousness are in love, patience, meekness, all the things that are good. That's what the Lord, you know, that's more acceptable to him than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. And this word plowing, it meant follow ground, like plowed ground, plowed, okay? But it, you can look at it as the heart because in the parable of the seed and the sower, the grounds, the different grounds that the seed falls on, it, it was hearts. So what it's saying here is a high look, a proud heart, okay? The heart of the wicked. It's sin. The heart of the righteous. Okay, the heart of the righteous. The Lord's looking for righteous hearts. And he is going to examine the hearts and minds. And we're going to be without excuse, you know, if we decide to walk in our own ways. Uh, Matthew 23, 23, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and, and cumin, and you have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Just like he said above, he's looking for justice and judgment. He's looking for for his word to be kept. You know, the weightier things, the things that change lives. Okay, because the pain you're tied, it ain't, it ain't changing. It ain't changing the heart. It just don't. The, the things that change people are God's love. He says, these you ought to have done. I mean, of course, do the one, but don't leave the other undone. And then in Matthew 9, 13, it says, But go ye and learn what it meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And if you look at these words, I am come to call sinners to repentance. This is our same assignment here. Go into the world, preach the gospel. And we all know it is written, the goodness of God leads to repentance. So if you are out there, you know, bad-mouthing people and condemning them and just being mean and hateful and writing them off, they're, tch, you're not going to lead no one to repentance by that kind of an attitude, the mean words and the, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. And we have to examine ourselves, okay? God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And if that is not our heart, if you know some great truth, and you are condemning people and writing them off and blocking them and unfriending them because they don't buy the truth that you've bought. They don't see the truth that you see. That is wrong because your heart should be for them to see it. If you have the truth and you know the truth, your heart should be the same as God for them to see it, to receive it. Your heart should be praying for them sincerely. Yep. Okay, put here. Shouldn't this be our heart's desire too? Yes, it should. We should be the same as our Lord. We are to be as He is. First Corinthians thirteen one through three. Everybody knows this. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You're just making a bunch of noise, but playing no tune. Okay. Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and I have all knowledge, and like the word says, knowledge puffs up. We can learn. We can come to know many, 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 many things, but if we don't have love, it's all pointless. Okay, though I have all faith, so I could remove mountains, and I have not charity, I am nothing. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, there's that sacrifice. But without mercy and love, it is nothing. You have not charity, it profits me nothing. So like it says here, you if you have all these things, but you don't have love, you're nothing. And the word tells us, for if a man thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. So if you think yourself to be a Christian, but you don't have love, you're really nothing, you're deceived. And that very scripture that I just quoted is from Galatians 6, 1 through 3. And look what it says. Before he says those words, it says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you, which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. If a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, 
If a man thinks himself to be a Christian, but he doesn't have love, he's really nothing. He's deceived. So when you look at this, we have all these people out there, you know, uh, Oh, you're overtaken in a fault, man. You're you're celebrating Christmas. You're you're an error, you know. You eat you, you don't keep Sabbath. You eat pork. You're an error, you know. You believe in this, that, and the other, and you're an error. So if that's the case, if someone's overtaken in a fault, if you're spiritual, if you're a Christian, if you're spirit filled, you know, born again, blood bought, a vessel of honor, serving the Lord in the Lord's service, then you are to restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Not in meanness. It doesn't say a spirit of meanness. It says meekness. There's a big difference. Okay? And we're, we need to fulfill the law of Christ. And what is that love? Love is patient and kind. It don't even want for itself. Okay? Why do we all want everybody to come to our beliefs? I mean, the only belief everybody needs to come to is the belief of Christ. Be born again. And then the Lord himself will teach them. He's promised to guide us into all truth. So we need to examine ourselves, you know, whether we be in the faith, because it's not according to what we say the faith is, it's according to what God says. Okay, and it says in 1 John four sixteen, we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. So if you're dwelling in meanness, you're dwelling in strife, you're dwelling in hatred, you're in big trouble, you need to repent. Okay, and in that same chapter in verse 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another for God, or sorry, for love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So this plainly tells us if somebody is not, does not have love in their hearts, they don't know God and nor have they been born of God yet. So, you know, if that's you, if you don't love your brothers and sisters out there sincerely, then you need to pray. You need to ask God to change your heart, fix your heart. Because the Lord says, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Okay? Walking in love, you do not practice iniquity. But if you're walking in iniquity, which hatred, strife, you know, divisions, and just all manner of yuck. Okay? God says to these people, I never knew you. You know? If, if we don't want God to say that to us. Because if you know, if like it says here, everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. So if you know God, obviously he knows you. And then we're told in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, you know, charity or love suffers long. It is kind. It does not envy, does not vaunt itself. And that's why I see out there's so many people that are just putting, you know, their thing out there. Like, this is what I believe and you need to line up with what I believe or you're stupid. You're lost. This is not the heart of God, okay? It is not puffed up. And we all know knowledge, like the word says, knowledge puffs up, okay? But love, love is what we're called to, okay? Does not, love does not behave itself unseemly, okay? It's not rude. I mean, I know Jesus got to the point sometime. I, a lot of people that are out there being rude and nasty to other people, they always want to say, well, he went in and he overturned the tables. You know, he threw them out. Yeah, he did. He's God. He can do that. But he didn't call us to overturn tables and whip people. He called us to love. He called us. He specifically said, love your enemies. If you consider someone your enemy, then love them. That simple. That's the plain truth. Okay? Because love does not behave rudely. The Lord wasn't behaving rudely when he did that. He was disciplining his children. And, you know, God disciplines his children. But he disciplines his children, okay? Love does not seek its own. It's not easily provoked. It doesn't think evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So why can't we endure our brother or sister's deception for a minute, you know? Bear with them. Bear with them in it. Believe for them. Hope for them. Because just as the Lord brings us where we need to be, he corrects us, he opens our eyes, he's going to do the same for them, if they're truly his. So why can't we hope for them, pray for them, believe for them, encourage them, love them? Okay, it says in Luke 9, 54 through 56, when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elijah did, or Elias in the Greek? But he turned and rebuked them 
And he said, You know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And this is the spirit that I see out there. It's such a spirit of meanness. You, you just People want to see people smitten, consumed and destroyed for their error. And half of the error that people are wanting to smite and consume, according to the word of God, they have liberty to walk in it. I can't believe, you know, the hatred concerning the holidays. It just blows my mind. Anyway, John 16, 13 through 14, it says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine. And shall show it unto you. Now this is speaking of the Holy Spirit. And so you got to consider there's a lot of people out there. They're, they're not speaking by the Spirit of God. Glorifying Jesus. Receiving those who are his. They're, they're just being mean and nasty and wanting to cut people off. Okay, They promote, you know, like this says, the Holy Spirit doesn't glorify himself. He glorifies Jesus. So, you know, if we're out there on social media, what are we glorifying? Are we glorifying our ministry? Are we glorifying our doctrines? Or are we glorifying the Lord? That's the big question, you know. Do you glorify Jesus or yourself, his way or your way? It says in Luke sixteen fifteen, he said unto them, You are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You know, we really need to consider that because what is in our heart is what matters. It's not what we're doing in this world. It's 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 what is in our heart. That's what God looks at. He examines the hearts and the minds. Okay, 1 Corinthians 4, 6-7. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might learn in us not to think of men, Above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who makes thee to differ from another? What hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if you did receive it, why do you glory as if you had not received it? And this right here is where pride and knowledge comes in. And I know because I have received that spanking years back. <laughs> If you, if God reveals things to you and you become prideful and you start beating up other people because they don't see what you've been shown, they don't understand what you understand, that is pride. It is bad. And the Lord will deal with you. So we need to check ourselves, okay? Because we are not to be puffed up one against another. We're not to lift up ourselves and look lowly on others because they're not where we're at. They don't see what we see because everybody is not perfect. From the day of their birth in Christ. It is quite the process. Quite the learning process and the sanctification process. Okay. Time. God had patience with us. We need to have patience with others. He had mercy with us. We need to have mercy with others. Okay. 1 Corinthians 8, 2 through 3. If any man thinks he knows anything, he knows nothing. Yet as he ought to know. Do you see this? We can know nothing except God reveals it to us. And we better be careful because he also is the one who allows deception. If a, if a prophet is deceived, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And he will al allow us to go off into deception because of pride. So we need to be careful, okay? But it says here, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. So those people, when he said, I don't know you, you that work iniquity, they didn't love God. They didn't love their brothers and sisters. Love is, like the Lord said, he talks about all these gifts. And then he says, yet I show unto you a more excellent way. Then he goes on to tell us about love. Okay. So as we ask ourselves, are we glorifying Jesus or ourselves, his way or our way? You can ask yourself also, do you do his will or your will? Because his command, you know, to love, that is to do his will. Yes, there's many things. We are to go in the world, preach the gospel. We are to do every jot and tittle of what is written in the new covenant. Anything he said, we are to do it. But you can do many of those things without obeying his command to love one another as he loved us. So we have to make sure we're doing his will and not our own will. 
Okay, Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And that comes from that scripture where they would say, Lord, you know, we prophesied, we cast out demons, we did all these wonderful works. And he says, I never knew you. And what did it say here? If any man loves God, the same is known of him. He says, I never knew you. They never loved God. There's so many people out there doing these ministries and so many of them are just trying to make a name for themselves and asking for donations, asking for financial support. You know, God's seed has never seen begging bread. The Lord provides for his. They don't, we don't have to go out there and beg. Okay, if God has given you a ministry, he will definitely meet your needs according to his riches and glory. He doesn't tell you, hey, go do this and not give you what you need. He always provides for his people. The Lord told us, except your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of God. This is serious stuff. Okay, it says in the Bible, without holiness, no man shall see God. And people think of holiness as keeping the Sabbath, not eating pork, preaching the flat or round earth, you know. People think of holiness as, as upholding certain doctrines. But the truth is, this is, what the, this is what the word says holiness is, okay, Ephesians 1, 4. According as he's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Do you see this? We are holy and without blame before God in love. We really need to understand this and seek this because those people who he said, I never knew you, depart from me. They did not enter the kingdom. They were not saved. The foolish virgins were not received. And Jesus said, if any man comes unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. So there's people not going to the Lord. There's people not knowing the Lord. Not walking in love, not knowing love, not knowing God, and and it's you gotta you gotta know the Lord. John thirteen thirty five says, "By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another." And like I've said before in some of the studies I've shared, if men know, okay, if by this men know, how much more does God, who searches the hearts and the minds? Okay, we need to check ourselves. Make sure. And if you really don't have sincere love for your brethren in your heart, you better repent. Ask the Lord to fix you. Okay? Because without holiness, without love, no man shall see God. Just like the word says, if any man has not the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. The Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of love. It's a Spirit of meekness, not meanness. Meekness. 1 Thessalonians 3, 12 through 13, it says, The Lord make you to increase and abound in love. Do you see this? We, we can't do nothing of ourselves. We have to do things his way. We have to be doers of his word. He said, Abide in me, let my word abide in you, and you will bring forth fruit. We have to ask, seek, knock. We have to follow after the Lord. Okay, because he's the one that makes us to increase and abound in love. He's the one that will cause our love to remain. Okay. So the Lord, and I pray this for the church all the time, make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men. Do you see this? One toward another and all men. Okay, even as we do toward you. To the end, he may, notice may, there's an if, establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. But do you see this here? The same as this one said, we are holy without blame before him in love. This one says, may he make you increase and abound in love. That you may be unblameable in holiness before God at his coming to the end. Well, what does this mean? Well, the love of many is going to wax cold. Okay, but like it says here, he that endures to the end in love. Okay, that same person will be saved. Because without holiness, no man is going to enter the kingdom. Without being born again, without being filled with love, no man is going to enter the kingdom. This is serious stuff. okay? And when the iniquity is abounding out there as it is right now, and the hatred and the strife and the, the ugly things, you know, the unthankfulness, unholiness, people don't even have natural affection. We need to make sure, give diligence, strive okay, to enter into those gates. Keep your love. Don't let your love wax cold. 
2 Peter 3.14, it tells us, Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, okay, all the things that are written concerning the last days. You know, he said in another scripture, Watch and pray that you may be able to escape all these things. Okay, all these things we know that are here, that are coming, seeing you look for such things, even the wrath of God to be poured out. Be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And surely you can understand from the scriptures we just read, that is walking in love, walking in his commandments. Okay, then Hebrews twelve fourteen it tells us, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Peace with all men. We are supposed to be walking in peace among one another in the body of Christ and holiness, love. Okay, so I just, I just wanted to send this out as a warning because I just see so many people on Facebook and in different groups and, and, and you know, I'm in groups and, and there's certain people just are just always just full of strife and meanness biting people you know we all got to grow we all got to grow in love but i mean some people out there if i go by what the word says i have to consider that these people don't yet know the lord and so i do sincerely pray for these people by name and i trust you know if they truly believe the lord died on the cross for their sins and rose from the dead and they, you know, truly have received any piece of his love. I know the Lord will set them straight. Because I know he's always disciplined me. And the word ain't no joke when he says he disciplines those he loves. So, you know, but we ourselves, we can avoid some spankings. You know, we can avoid some tribulations. Like when it says, forgive one another from your heart. And if you don't, he'll give you over to the tormentors. That means he will give you over to the hand of the enemy, you know, to teach you a lesson. And so we can learn by following and hearing the word of God sincerely, or we can learn through, you know, spankings. One way or another, we'll learn, you know, if we love the Lord and we truly believe his word. But anyways, I just wanted to share this because it's just, and, and then on the other side of the coin too, when you are attacked and you are judged and you are condemned by men, don't take it to heart. Because the Lord is our judge, okay? We are all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Don't let these people's mean words and hatred pierce your heart, okay? Because when they're walking in that spirit, it's not, it's not the spirit of the Lord. Okay, don't be moved by that. Continue in faith, hope, and love. Because that's where the Lord's at. And he will get us all where we need to be. Anyways, I hope something in here just will strengthen you, you know, in love. And that, you know, we will all walk in that to the end by the grace and mercy of God. In Jesus' name, amen.